In the Federalist versus Anti-Federalist debate, there were two main parties who had opposing views on the Constitution. There were the Federalists, who favored the ratification of the Constitution, and the Anti-Federalists, who were opposed to the Constitution. Notable Federalists include Alexander Hamilton and James Madison. The Federalists noticed that there were many weaknesses in the Articles of Confederation, such that the Articles gave Congress the power to pass laws, but did not give Congress the power to enforce the laws. So if a, if a state did not support the federal law, the state could simply ignore it. Congress also did not have the power to levy taxes or regulate trade. The Federalists believed that a constitutional government would fix the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. There was the issue arised of the Bill of Rights, if it would be in the Constitution or not. The Federalists believed that the liberties that would be designated in the Bill of Rights would be covered in the state constitutions. The opposing side are the Anti-Federalists. Notable members include Samuel Adams and John Hancock. The Anti-Federalists oppose the ratification process of the Constitution. They believed that if a Constitution was in place, the presidency could turn into a monarchy by seizing too much power, or Congress could in turn seize too much power and turn back into some sort of monarchical form of government like Britain. They also believe that there should be a Bill of Rights and that it should be included and not left up to the state constitutions. The Anti-Federalists had many criticisms on the form of government. The one that appears most valid to me is their criticism that there should be a Bill of Rights. Having a Bill of Rights would act as an official declaration where everything is stated for the entire nation. So states couldn't declare their own rights because they could all be different and not equal. Having a Bill of Rights would be an overall declaration that all of the states would have to follow and act as an official document. One of the main components of the Federalist argument is that the Constitution did not need a Bill of Rights. They believed that the Bill of Rights wouldn't be necessary because the laws would be covered in state constitutions. I do not agree with their position. I believe that a Bill of Rights was necessary at the time and still is necessary to act as a central and equal point for all of the states to base their rules and government off of. If there wasn't one, all of the states could create different laws and different rules and make it very hard to govern under one cohesive unit. The Federalists put forth many reasons to support the Constitution. One of the most important reasons is that it would fix the weakness of the Articles of Confederation. Some weaknesses of the Articles is that each state only had one vote in Congress, regardless of the size. Uh, Congress didn't have the power to tax states or to regulate foreign trade. There was no executive branch to enforce any acts that were passed by Congress, and there was no national court system. The new constitution would fix the weaknesses mentioned in the, in the Articles of Confederation, allowing for an easier and more centralized government that had more power to regulate. Despite strong reasons put forth to support the constitution, there were also federalist opinions that were a little bit weaker such as the idea that the Constitution did not need a Bill of Rights. Some believe that a Bill of Rights would create a, quote, parchment barrier that would limit the rights of the people, as opposed to protecting them. Both James Madison and Alexander Hamilton strongly supported the idea to not add a Bill of Rights, for they believed that it would do more harm than good. Despite the fact that James Madison eventually presented the bill to Congress, despite his former stance on the issue. An old article written by a Federalist in 1787 has recently been found. The article discusses the author's opinion on Federalists and Anti-Federalists and shows support for the adoption of a constitution. Here's what the article says. In this current climate, there lies a large amount of discrepancy between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. The issue of eliminating the Articles of Confederation and assembling a new constitutional government is now more present than ever. Action needs to be taken, and what needs to be done is the abolishment of the Articles. Such poorly written documents should never have run our nation in the first place. The Articles are filled with redundancy and idiocratic laws. It baffles me how blind the Anti-Federalists are to the flaws in their beloved documents.
Our Congress lacks such a vital power that is required to govern our nation. They cannot tax our states, they cannot regulate our nation's trade. Even though they can pass laws, they hold absolutely no power to enforce them. Such a situation resembles a carriage driver who owns horses, but can never control them. So obtaining horses to begin with seems a futile effort. In such a present case, our government holds no power. Everything is left up to the states, which presents itself as a much larger issue. The states do not hold the same opinions on issues. They are all in opposition of one another. If each state creates different laws that are all contradictory to one another, how is the nation supposed to work as a cohesive unit? Anti-Federalists are blinded by our past relationship with Britain. They fail to realize what needs to change in order for our nation to grow in independence. They are what is holding our nation back, and they must be shown the true facts of the situation. Only then can we move forward as a progressive nation and pursue life with our rights and liberties.